very warm welcome to the first ever Impact Forum in Singapore. My name is Sue Su, and as a volunteer, supporter, and admirer of IIX and Shujog, I'm delighted and honored to be your MC for this two-day event. Looking around this crowd of familiar faces and new ones, I feel a remarkable excitement. The first time I met with Doreen and Rob about the idea for a regional impact investing platform, it was three years ago, a conversation between just three people, and it took me about three minutes to say, yes, I will volunteer. Why? Like many of you, I'm inspired by people who are passionate about what they do and how they bring meaning to others. That is what I found with IIX and Shujug, and that is what I believe we will all experience together during this forum. Each of us is here because, as this year's forum's theme suggests, we want to help ignite capital markets for social good. This means taking action, real action. And over these next two days, that is exactly what we all will do. I'm rolling up my sleeves, and I know you're ready to do the same. Leading us in this charge is the woman I am so happy to introduce now. Professor Doreen Shanaz is the founder and chairwoman of Impact Investment Exchange and founder and managing director of Impact Investment Shujug. Doreen's journey to this moment has been a particularly global and determined one. No surprise to those of us who know her. From Morgan Stanley in New York, Grameen Bank in Bangladesh, the World Bank in Washington, D.C., Merrill Lynch in Hong Kong, to founding and selling the social purpose business One Nest in New York, to heading Asia operations for media companies such as Hearst Magazines International, Reader's Digest Asia, and Asia City Publishing Group. Doreen has been a pathmaker in banking, media, and social entrepreneurship. She's a proud alumna of Smith College, the Wharton School of Business, and the School for Advanced International Studies at Johns Hopkins University. She serves on the World Economic Forum's Global Agenda Council on Social Innovation and the advisory board for the Case Initiative on Impact Investing at Duke University's Fuqua School of Business. Doreen is an adjunct associate professor for the Lee Kuan Yew School of Public Policy right here at the National University of Singapore and the social entrepreneur in residence at INSEAD. She was a TED 2010 fellow and Asia Society 21 fellow. And perhaps most importantly, she is excited to lead, learn, and innovate alongside all of you. Doreen. Wow. Sue, thank you so much for that very kind and generous introduction. It's because of believers like Sue that I can be standing here today, so thank you. Professor Tan, friends from far and near, a lot of familiar faces, good morning and welcome to Impact Forum 2012. I am absolutely thrilled to be here today, surrounded by social entrepreneurs, impact investors, policy makers, ecosystem partners from over 45 countries across the globe. Thank you all for making the time from your busy schedule to come and celebrate the growth and emergence of social capital markets in Asia. As we all know, doing good with investment or donation have been in practice in many different ways over the centuries. However, it is only in the last decade or so that these practices have been culled together, formally under the label of social entrepreneurship venture philanthropy, and now impact investing. And now all of these practices can be put together on the umbrella of social capital markets. Each one of us have contributed in our own way to the growth of social capital market space. And it's good to see that all our work is culminating into this incredible vibrant space of using the best of the financial world to bring about sustainable solution for economic development. We're all sitting here today in wonderful Singapore, one of the shining examples of what a country can achieve when there's a right mix of public policy, private sector initiative, and, and civil society participation. 
However, as we know, there are not very many other Singapores in this world or in Asia. Asia today contains 60% of the world's population and all the development and the environmental challenges that go with it. Governments and civil society alone cannot solve the unsurmountable issues surrounding us today here in Asia. This is where the private sector has a great opportunity to come and play a role. Private sector in Asia in general, as we all know, has experienced unprecedented growth in the last decade, as a result of which there are now 3.3 million high net worth individuals in Asia with their cumulative wealth totaling over $10 trillion. Yes, it's a lot of money. There's a lot of money in Asia. This wealth can be, should be, and is beginning to be directed to sustainable development. The purpose of the next two days, and many days after that, is to bring together social enterprises that are addressing some of the biggest challenges in Asia today, be it in renewable energy, fair trade, agriculture, healthcare, or microfinance, with impact investors who want to use their investment and wealth to bring about sustainable change and bring along with them other stakeholders, such as the lawyers, the bankers, the accountants, the raging agencies, and the research companies, who are the enablers of the system. With all these people together, we'll bring the practice of social capital markets to new heights. As many of you know, and as you heard from Sue, my involvement in the space began 20 years ago when I worked at Grameen Bank. My involvement in the space became deeper with my first company, One Nest, where we worked with thousands of artisans from around the world, and mostly women, and gave them access to the global market to sell their handmade ethical products. The biggest takeaway from my time at Grameen and One Nest was that a good idea and good intention alone cannot make a company grow. The company needs the right kind of capital and the right nurturing environment to prosper. Traditional markets were not constructed to meet the needs of organizations like One Nest, where, which was financially sustainable. However, it had a social mission and purpose, something the traditional markets could not embrace. Unfortunately, nor were the foundations and multilateral banks, which at that time believed that social and environmental returns can be achieved only if one ignored financial sustainability and if one was a, only a not-for-profit organization. Ten years later, the world is a very different place. Traditional financial players are realizing that they're being ostracized by the public because of the single pursuit of profit, and the foundation and the multilateral banks are realizing there is not enough philanthropy money to meet all the social and environmental need, and financial sustainability does matter. Thus, five years ago, I sold One Nest, and I sought to create a new marketplace for social enterprises, impact investors, and other industry stakeholders through IX and Shujog. The learnings I had with One Nest was instrumental in creating the right platforms for IX and Shujog to take on the missionary zeal of creating platforms and infrastructure for social market, capital markets to thrive in Asia. It has been incredibly rewarding to watch the space evolve as my own personal story has. Now the organization that are trying to establish various parts of the ecosystem for impact investing, such as measuring the impact, access to capital, research, et cetera, and many of you are here today doing that work. My story is not unique, as many of you here again are striving towards the progress of the space, and I want to take the opportunity to commend your efforts and also urge you not to give up. I know it's challenging, and we may, in our lifetime, not see a perfect world, but we can and absolutely should set the ball rolling in the right direction and go on the journey together of creating at least a semi-perfect world. <coughs> Friends, for the next two days, you'll share your stories and wisdom about impact investing in Asia, connecting markets through ecosystem, issues relating to raising capital, the need for innovation within large organizations to embrace sustainable development, role of social enterprises in climate change, the pioneers in frontier investment, and the list goes on. It is two days filled with ideas and actions, optimism and reality, challenges and opportunities. We created the form to reflect all our ideals and beliefs, and with this in mind, we made it as sustainable as possible, with the food being sourced from social enterprise, using recycled paper, and even using fake flowers, so to add to the ambience. As the African proverb goes, it takes a village to, ra to raise a child, and this, of course, is true for any form of infancy. We are part of this village to raise the child of impact investing and social capital markets. 
And because of the support of this global village, IX and Shujok is where it is today in such a short period of time. Over the course of last three years, we had incredible support from over 170 volunteers and incredible support and belief from organizations such as the Asian Development Bank, Rockefeller Foundation, a number of law firms, accounting firms, multinational corporations, academic institution, and financial institutions who gave their time, resources, and advice and helped us raise these two companies. The support from this global village continues to make this forum a reality today. I would like to thank the incredible supporters of Impact Forum 2012, the Asian Development Bank, Rockefeller Foundation, National University of Singapore, SK Group, Bank of America Merrill Lynch, Ministry of Community Development, Youth and Sports, Singapore Tourism Board, Microsoft, The Gate, Global Women's Forum, Bloomberg, and Sasa. I want to thank all of you for your immense support and your incredible belief in the power of social capital markets and impact investing. Friends, take the next two days as the food for your soul. Listen to the speakers, challenge their finding, but embrace their wisdom. Be skeptical of their optimism, but celebrate their courage. Question their innovation, but support them with your action. End of it all, think of the answer to the simple question. What can you do to leave this better, better place than you found it? And do something about it. Be inspired, be informed, and be ignited. Welcome to Impact Forum 2012. I would like to now introduce a true pioneer in the space of um, impact investing, and now over the last two years, I have to say a great friend, Bart Edis. Bart is the director of ADB's Poverty Reduction, Gender, and Social Development Division, and this division provides quality assurance and technical support of ADB of operational departments in health, education, social protection, and other social related poverty reduction related um, issues. But most importantly, Bart is one of the incredible pioneers in the space of development who saw the promises of impact investing early on. Our work with ADB is very much responsible because of Bart's work with us, and I thank Bart for being the guiding light for us in terms of learning about impact investing space in Asia. Ladies and gentlemen, Bart Edis. Good morning. Thank you very much for those very generous words, Doreen. And congratulations to IIX Asia and Shujug for organizing what is probably the most significant regional event in Asia and the Pacific this year, addressing social enterprises and impact investing. A truly exciting space, uh, a dynamic space, and one you can see that is inspiring the, inspira inspiring the imagination of so many people. Just the illusion that Doreen made to so many volunteers involved in this effort, not just students, but <coughs> career professionals who have been in business for many years, seeing the potential of, of these areas. You know, in this month, in, in June, we have seen quite a bit of activity among international negotiators addressing issues of well-being, human well-being. A week and a half ago, the International Labor Congress met in Geneva, Switzerland, uh, with representatives of over 140 countries, including countries from around Asia and the Pacific. And they reached agreement on a recommendation in the area of social protection, urging member governments to create social protection floors to ensure that everyone would have essential health care, that everyone would have basic income security, including in times of need, such as unemployment, illness, disability, and old age, and also providing for children's access to education and nutrition. It's a tremendously ambitious and, dare I say, expensive proposition and yet, this is what countries around the world have agreed to a week and a half ago. More recently, last week, the press was full of reports from Rio Plus 20, the UN Conference on Sustainable Development, on an anniversary of the significant Rio meeting two decades ago. And here, countries around the world, government representatives, negotiators, renewed commitments to sustainable development. And they argued for the promotion of economically, socially, and environmentally sustainable action. They called for an urgent end to poverty and hunger, glo uh, hunger globally, 
and for acceleration in achieving the Millennium Development Goals before 2015 when, they, when the deadline comes. And significantly, they recognized, quote unquote, the need for significant mobilization of resources from a variety of sources. Now that's highly relevant to this form because where's the money going to come from? Certainly governments have their role to play. International agencies like the one I represent have a role to play. But the needs are overwhelming. Notwithstanding the great gains, the historic gains made in Asia and the Pacific and the reduction of poverty and other gains on socioeconomic indicators, there is still widespread deprivation. Again, hard to see from the standpoint of this, this gleaming city, but around us, not far from us, there are literally hundreds of millions of people without access to basic sanitation, to clean water, to energy, to education and health. And I think that that is why this event is so incredibly significant, because it taps into a source it taps into an answer to some of the problems that stare us in the face, some very significant social challenges. ADB is the regional development bank for Asia and the Pacific. We are working toward poverty reduction as part of our strategic agenda for the next 15 years or so. We are working for inclusive growth, expanding opportunity, and providing greater access to, to more people, to, to basic needs, and to uh, the prosperity that much of the region is beginning to enjoy. We need inclusive growth. To get that, we're going to need innovation, and we're going to have to tap the entrepreneurial spirit for which this region has become widely known. And this takes me to, to impact investing in social enterprises. These are areas that, frankly, my institution doesn't know a whole lot about. In the last two years, working with Doreen and her colleagues and other organizations, we've learned quite a bit and made a lot of uh, useful relationships that, and we're beginning to understand more clearly what the potential is here. And this is why we have been committed to helping to catalyze this space. Uh, as I speak with colleagues who are used to more traditional ways of a development finance institution, I can see the glimmer in some of their eyes that, hey, this is quite exciting. Sustainable models, tapping huge private sector reserves, addressing in a sustainable way social and environmental challenges, including climate change. That's why several colleagues of mine have joined for this uh, two-day event and looking forward to meeting many of you during the breakout sessions and plenaries and, and during the breaks in between. In short, I just want to conclude uh, with my brief remarks that uh, ADB recognizes impact investing and social enterprises as a key part to addressing the challenges and meeting the kinds of needs that have been identified by international negotiators in the last two weeks. We're not going to achieve the MDGs. We're not going to have a more sustainable future unless we can tap into the role that the private sector can play, that social enterprises can play. And the fact that you're here, you understand that. And that's fantastic. And, and to see such a, a broad gathering from across the region and from outside Asia and the Pacific speaks to the timeliness of this event, to the timeliness of these issues. This is uh, the first, I think, it, it's the first such forum in Singapore. I suspect that there's going to be more. And the crowds are going to get larger when they realize and begin to see the accomplish accomplishments that can be made in this space. So thank you very much. Thank you so much. And again, to you and Asian Development Bank for all of the support you've given to this entire space. Next, we have a special visit by video from the Rockefeller Foundation's innovative and dynamic president, Dr. Judith Roden. As one of the pioneering conveners in the impact investing space, the Rockefeller Foundation has been an integral catalyst globally. And IIX and Shujog have been extremely grateful for its support. Dr. Roden was here in Singapore last September to lead fascinating discussions around the impact investing ecosystem. And while she's busy leading a foundation board meeting at this time, she didn't want to miss this opportunity to share a few words with you. Good morning. It's a pleasure to be addressing this diverse group of innovators and social change makers from Asia's impact investing community. I really regret not being able to join you in person, partly because of how much I enjoyed my last visit to Singapore, but also to feel the energy and the sense of possibility that comes from being in the same room with so many people committed to the field of impact investing. In 2008, the Rockefeller Foundation made a commitment 
to building the then nascent and fragmented field of impact investing. Since that time, we've concentrated on establishing the infrastructure and the processes and the systems, as well as seeding new elements of the impact investing sector, from the Global Impact Investing Network, GIN, to rating systems such as GEARS and IRIS. We're proud to have supported the development of institutions that have proved critical to the acceleration of impact investing, including our host today, Shujag and IIX. Today's annual impact forum is the first of its kind for the sector. All of you here today are critical to help shaping Asia's evolution as a leader in the impact investing community, appropriately held in one of the epicenters of that evolution, Singapore. Asia's leadership role in impact investing is evident throughout the region, through the support of the Asian Development Bank, to the work of organizations like Change Fusion, to the commitment of the Singaporean government. Additionally, Asia's leadership in the sector is solidified by organizations like Shujag and IIX, both of which are dedicated to connecting game-changing social enterprises to the impact investments they need in order to grow and to improve the lives of Asia's poor or vulnerable communities. Through its advocacy, its research, and capacity building efforts, Shujag is busy preparing the next generation of Asia's social entrepreneurs. And through its private platform, Impact Partners, IIX has achieved a successful track record of connecting social enterprises with impact investors seeking double or triple bottom line returns. It is my hope that this is only the first of many impact forums and that this community will continue to learn together and to work together to chart new courses of action for advancing the impact investing field in Asia. Thank you. Our many thanks to Dr. Rodin. As an enthusiastic Rockefeller Foundation alumna myself, I can absolutely second what she says about the foundation's deep commitment to the space and the valuable potential that it sees. Um, so thank you again. Our next speaker feels absolutely at home in this auditorium and in arenas of innovation, education, health, and impact. Professor Tan Cho Chuan is the president of National University of Singapore, on whose beautiful campus we are lucky enough to be these next two days. Professor Tan is also chairman of the National University Health System, deputy chairman of Singapore's Agency for Science, Technology, and Research, chairman of the International Alliance of Research Universities, and in his spare time, a member of the board of directors of the Monetary Authority of Singapore. His exemplary medical career started right here at NUS, with related bachelor, master, and PhD degrees, as well as with a degree from the Royal College of Physicians in the UK and research training at the Institute of Molecular Medicine in Oxford. Professor Tan has served in senior positions with Singapore's Ministry of Health and is a member of the Global University Leaders Forum and Science Advisory Committee of the World Economic Forum, the recipient of numerous national awards and honors for his service and leadership as well as multiple honorary doctorate degrees. Professor Tan has been igniting impact throughout his career, and I'm so pleased to welcome him now. Professor Tan. Good morning, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. It is my great pleasure to warmly welcome you to this forum, to Singapore and to the National University of Singapore. I'd like to make a, a few brief remarks uh, relating to NUS's interests uh, in impact investing and to say what a pleasure it is for us to be involved in this forum this morning and for the next two days. NUS's aspiration is to be a global university centered in Asia, influencing the future. And in line with this, we think it's very important for us to inculcate in our students a spirit of enterprise and a commitment to pursue not just personal excellence, but also to make a positive impact on community and on society. In other words, not only to do well, but also to do good. 
So indeed, I'm very pleased to say that over the years, we have witnessed a growing interest among NUS students and students more generally in Singapore, an interest in community services in general and social entrepreneurship in particular. As we all know, the traditional models of volunteerism, philanthropy and corporate social responsibility remain very important for addressing social challenges. But an increasing number of NUS students are attracted by the idea of applying business entrepreneurial approaches for solving social problems because they have the potential to be more sustainable and scalable. This could involve, for example, the application of new technologies to dramatically reduce the costs of delivering certain services to those at the so-called bottom of the pyramid, or innovating new business models to create jobs and develop skills for disadvantaged groups. In response to this growing student interest, NUS has set up through the leadership of Professor Wong Pokam, my colleague, and the NUS Entrepreneurship Centre he, he, he runs. We have set up an incubation program to nurture social entrepreneurial startups by the NUS community. And I'm pleased to note that a number of these social ventures which we've incubated have received support from impact investors. Just as venture capitalists and angel investors are a critical part of the supporting ecosystem for technology startups, a vibrant community of impact investors is critical for social entrepreneurship to take root. This is because they bring the necessary rigor of financial discipline and social impact investment and, and social impact assessment to identify and to fund ventures that are socially driven yet are financially viable. So in this regard, NUS is truly honoured to be part of Impact Forum 2012 and be supporting the work of Professor Doreen Shanas and her team at Impact Investment Exchange Asia. We are very honoured to be able to do this and we are very inspired by the work that Doreen has been leading all these years. We are also confident that the nascent impact investing industry will grow rapidly in Asia. Singapore is well positioned to be a major hub in Asia for impact investing and NUS looks forward to making a significant contribution towards this. So welcome once again to our campus and to Singapore and please do have a most fruitful and enjoyable meeting. Thank you.